So real quick, we have a special announcement. We're going to introduce some people. As a lot of you know, the UFC is exploding. This month, I personally have arranged travel for fighters going to Carnegie in Colombia, Abu Dhabi, London, Brazil. I'm leaving for China on Sunday to go to Macau. We are doing events all over the world, hence we opened up what we call the UFC Fight Pass. So today we're going to introduce you to a new commentating team who's going to be working the London event. So I'd like to bring in, we are happy to announce, John Gooden, who's a veteran MMA announcer. Come on up on stage, John. Let's give him a hand. Okay, now we also got somebody who's going to be our Bruce Buffer in London, Andy Friedlander. And our third member of the team, a guy you never want to arm bar, ladies and gentlemen, Dan the Outlaw Hardy. So just quickly, we're going to do a little introduction, so I want to ask John, just give me a little bit about uh, MMA in Europe, and also a little bit about how you got involved in MMA. Sure, well I'll start with a personal story. I've been a lifelong martial artist and uh, really got captured by the infectious of mixed martial arts, probably about 10 years ago maybe. It was, and it really gripped me, so uh, I wanted to represent the sport a bit better. Found myself doing some commentary and it's just, just kind of gone from there. And mixed martial arts in the UK and in Europe is it's exploding, it really is. But it's not quite at this level. We're going to get it there. i got to ask you, how in the world are you going to fill the shoes of the legendary Bruce Buffer? Not going to even try. Perfect. Not going to even try. First of all, can I just say as well, hello everybody, we're in Vegas, absolutely loving it. So, I can't fill Bruce Buffer's shoes. Um, and just a little bit about the background. So I work on major sports events in, uh, across Europe, have never bought a football shirt, a rugby shirt in my life, but I buy MMA gear. I'm the guy who, you know, that guy. I've got the old Chuck Liddell shirts. So I'm a massive fan, and when I got the call, and they said, you know, do you want to go to Vegas? Do you want to work with John Good and Dan the Outlaw Hardy, and be involved in one of the coolest sports organizations in the world? How long does it take you to say yes? You know, I'm here, thank you. And thank you for coming in. So finally, now that Dan's kind of doing a little work for the UFC, we're going to get him downstairs in the gym because I want to put you in an armbar to see if I can get you to tap, which I don't think it'll ever happen. But, so Dan, tell us a little bit about how you're feeling about doing this. You're kind of transitioning a bit. You're a great fighter. You were, one, you were one of my favorite fighters. You're also a guy that we could always call and ask him to do charity work and things like that. Dan always said yes which to us is so important. So just tell me a little bit of how you're feeling about going into commentating and, and helping the UFC that way. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. I remember my UFC debut back at 89 and my heart was beating kind of like it is right now. Um, the, the fighting became kind of straightforward. It was kind of my comfort zone. I've, you know, I've done it for so long and I don't really get nervous about it anymore. I just, just have the excitement. And I'll be honest, I've got a little bit of nerves for this. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a good team. These guys are going to kill it. It's going to be, it's going to be a great project. And I'm so excited to be working on it. Um, it's going to take a bit of getting used to though for me, I think. I I'm good at watching fights and I'm a huge UFC fan, so I'm just going to try and relay what's happening in the cage in my perspective to you guys watching them. I'm, I'm going to do my best. You're going to have to teach them the Bruce Buffer thing with you. Because that was always the best. I always waited for that, you know? <laughs> no, he's got it, he's got it. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, the first fight they'll be doing is UFC Fight Night in London on March 8th. A huge card and we've got Alexander Gustafsson versus Jimmy Manawa, so we've got a great fight to headline that card. And, and to the media, they'll be actually doing media at 4.30 and will be available for that. Ladies and gentlemen, our new comment team for UFC Fight Pass. Thank you, everybody. A lot that fighters see that fans don't necessarily see, and I'm hoping to be able to, to show some of that. But at the same time, Ultimately, I want to be on the other side of the fence, and, and everybody knows that. Um, the technicality of getting cleared and, and the liability issue and, uh, is that's still ongoing, and, and this will give me an opportunity to, to kind of take my time and you know start integrating martial arts back into my training. Now I've, I've taken some time off and healed up, and I feel I feel ready to ready to attack it again. Um, so once the, the you know the technical stuff's out of the way of getting cleared, then yeah, we're stepping back in there, but not 
not as a full-time professional athlete anymore. Yeah. I'd still, I'd like super fights now. I'd like to do, you know, maybe one fight a year or one every 18 months and just kind of, just kind of fight guys that are going to give me a good scrap. Are you able to train right now? Or is it, Training twice a day, yeah, yeah. My, my health, my health and my physicality is perfectly fine. Um, it literally is just, just the liability issue of, you know, it, is this an issue? Is it going to cause an issue later on in my life? And potentially if I'm fighting at a, you know, at a high level and I'm exhausted, is my heart gonna gonna hold up? I mean, I, I'm confident in it. I've just got to prove to the UFC that that's the case. Well, I've I've already done a whole bunch of uh, different kinds of tests, uh, EKGs and ultrasounds, and I did the fitness I did uh, the fitness testing a couple of times. I broke the record on the fitness test, so they don't really have anything to stop me other than the fact that they don't really know a great deal about it because they can't find the second heartbeat in my heart. They've, with all the tests they've done, they don't know where it's coming from. So before they can really do anything, they've got to go into my heart and have a look around. And that, for me, is straight off the table. Because, I mean, I've never had any symptoms, so why would I have something treated that's never caused me a problem? How frustrating was this for you to try to look through this whole thing? You just kind of, you got to just wait, you just wait. It, you know the frustrate the frustrations kind of passed to be honest and I've, I've really started to utilize the time um to my advantage i mean the, the first couple of months there was you know i was stopped right in the middle of training camp so there's that kind of there's, there's that energy that i've been i've been building that i've got nothing to do with i can't you know get rid of it in any way so it was it was frustrating to start with but then i started channeling that into other things and you know i'm doing a lot more writing now and um uh, I have time to spend spend with you know friends and family, which I didn't have before. It, it's kind of made me realise how much I sacrificed to be a professional fighter. Um, and and over this year, I, I've re I've realised that I'm capable of doing a lot of other things as well. And, and one of the things that I'm really looking forward to is is this job. And these guys are are, are a great team to have next to me. And who will be working the color commentator aspect and the okay and then the, the play by play? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're, play -by -play. <laughs> we're, we're the play by play. Okay. And then Andy's going to do all the announcing so. in the octagon. What's it like to have to step into the, that kind of a role? Do you know I want to be part of that moving forward and help you know grow it beyond 20 years. And I uh, no stage I'm going to try and copy what Bruce does. Bruce is Bruce and you guys have known him since the beginning. And I think the other advantage is there's hopefully a bit of time to evolve with it. There's no magic line. There's no kind of thing that's going to happen in London on the 8th of March that... Everyone is, that's the trademark. It's just going to, we're going to grow with it and uh, see how it goes. But excited, yeah. really excited. No three, uh, no 360 spins. <laughs> no 360. <laughs> no 360. Yeah, 1080. We're going to do what they do at the X Games. Drop the mic and be like, what, Bruce? Look down the camera. Yeah. Off no. Into the split. Yeah. no, people have talked about that, but it's, it's, he's, he's very much who he is. And, uh, you know, I think if you speak to, you know, the Dana and Lorenzo and the London team, it's a different, Market, but the sport's fundamentally the same. So, you know, we'll we'll see how it evolves. I did. I met him earlier today. I met him earlier today. He uh, he put his digits in my phone, and you know, he's kind of if you need a hand. And one of the reasons I think you know they they wanted us here is what better way to kind of see it in action than just to be ringside in Vegas, uh, you know, at the side of the octagon watching it happen. So we're going to hopefully learn a lot in the next. Um, 24, 48 hours. Have you guys worked together before, or how did, how did it sort of come about? Well, we, uh, I think there were options, and uh, we we had to do a trial run together. So I guess Dan had to do that with a, with a few other people. He was always a given, um, so I guess I was the variable. <laughs> he, he thinks that, but I really wasn't. Um, <laughs> well, actually, they both they both auditioned. These are the best two guys for the job. They, they, you know. Yeah, we I think a lot of people have been the company a long time, but we didn't go. Hey, can we find a job for Dan? They're like Dan was Dan was the man. Yeah. Along yeah. with the cage warriors, you have guys coming out of there like obviously Conor McGregor. So yeah, exactly. How much of the upcoming talent do you feel like you've been able to get a grasp for that you'll be able to actually see in the octagon? There's m there's more than half the London card that I've worked with before, so I think with the location of of the stuff we're trying to do, I've worked with these. These guys before, you know, that the fighters, the coaches, the teams. So I'm known to them, which is going to help. Dan obviously has those inroads as well, and being a fighter, uh, he he's going to have that trust to be able to engage, which you know I've been able to do as well. But I think Dan just understands it on a on a whole new level. So together, it's um, it's quite a nice bl blend, and we were really looking forward to how we were going to structure certain things. And uh, in the research side, not just the the play-by-play -play and, and, and the color commentary, but 
Yeah, it's going to be cool. I mean, I've never sat next to someone who's a bona fide world, a bona fide world class uh, mixed martial artist, and that gives me so many outs. You know, I can <laughs> I can talk about something, and Dan's going to get it, and he's going to it's going to come up with something that is going to teach people, Where, and it's going to it's quite educational still, I think, mm -hmm. in Europe. So we're gonna yeah, we're gonna I think with Dan's personality, hopefully my style, I've really come from a educational kind of we've really got to go away from all the negative connotations of this sport certainly in the UK because they are there are some roots still there and we need to just yank those out and um, I've got to be confident that uh, that we're the guys that, that can do that what differences do you see between the euro and North American markets just it's just more established I think the media coverage is different we have what we'd call mainstream media we, we have Gareth A Davies he does like the broadsheet apart from that we don't get many positive followings. Uh, maybe when you know when when Dan was fighting uh, Mike Bisping, there might be some coverage in general media, but it's not like the level that it is out here. So there's some digital coverage, but hopefully now you know more shows, uh, momentum, and uh, you know increasing the amount of content coming out from from that office. It's you know it's well it just takes over, doesn't it? As we've seen over here. Through education comes appreciation, right? I like that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> Feel free. Yeah. When, when you two did your test run together, did you do an actual UFC live show, or did you do, watch a video? Uh, no. It was uh, yeah, it was Singapore. Yeah, we we weren't allowed to watch the card, which was kind of a pain because obviously we're researching the fighters, so and and they're all they're all new fighters pretty much. I mean, we've not heard of most of them, so we we kind of gone through and made our own notes, and then we'd had a conversation on the phone beforehand to discuss it. But other than that, we just kind of sat down in front of the. The screen and watch we did five fights did we yeah I think yeah. So. yeah just one after the other as if it was a, a live event and we had to you know pretend that we were in a re an arena with a, an audience and yeah it's kind of unusual wasn't it yeah so. yeah i think i mean i'm quite used to, I've, I've been in some situations where the the crowds haven't been so animated so i've, I've got an appreciation for trying to create that uh just amplify things a little bit more which is something that you uh, we're, They've we're been so it. British, they absolutely nailed it. Come on, you went in there, <laughs> you got it absolutely right, and everyone no, I mean, went, I mean, you are the guys who are going to be doing it. It's given me time to kind of like fall in love with the sport again, you know, become a fan. And I've been researching fights since, uh, you know, since before Christmas for this, you know, potential new job. And I'm just loving watching the UFC again. And, and that's, for me, that's the biggest reward of doing this job is that I can just be a fan. You've always been pretty dedicated. You did the Shaolin Monks when you went to China and you trained with them. He always took fighting real seriously, real cerebral. He always put a lot into it. What's kind of been that for this section of your career? What, what do you look back on, like, the, the spent hours, the long nights? Like, uh, I imagine you've been pretty dedicated in this endeavor, I guess, is mm -hmm. what I'm getting at. Um, it's, it's basically just like studying tape for a fight, but I'm doing it, in, I'm doing it on a much larger scale, and I'm not having to take myself into account. You know, I'm not watching fights now from a perspective of, okay, Who's this guy? How do I beat him? And how could he beat me? Right. Now I'm watching and I'm and I'm comparing him to the rest of the division and to the fight that he's got. And it, it's nice. To, it's nice for the research to be independent of me. I don't have to compare myself to anybody. So I don't have to. I don't have to realize how terrible I am half of the time when I'm watching. You know, some of these amazing athletes compete, and I can just watch them and be amazed at how awesome they are. And and in and in this situation, I'm right on the other side of the fence doing it. Well, you're a fighter. Do you have to kick, kind of taper your ego a little bit in that? <laughs> I'm going to have to, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to sit on my hands. I'm going to be twitching and wanting to get in there for sure. <laughs> that puts me in a dangerous position, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all pumped. Dan's yeah. going to help you out. Maybe not. Maybe you just get a left cross. You don't even know. You never know. Yeah. Other people who, who do this, who, who, come, who do commentary and stuff, uh, you know, they, they, they criticize quite a bit. You know, people say if they're one-sided, this or that. Uh, first of all, um, do you have you found it easier or harder than you thought it would be? Because watching from far is a lot different than doing it. Um, and second of all, I mean, have you been have you been critical of people in the past? You, you did mention some people are not good at it. So, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I got asked this question yesterday actually about uh, um, being. I mean, I am quite outspoken, and, and that's kind of a part of, of you know how the fans know me, um, particularly from early on in my career with the, with the Davis fight and such. Um, so. Going into this role, nothing's going to change. I said this yesterday. I asked this question: If we get a situation like the Caleb Starnes fight, and there's one guy and he's just backpedaling, running away, 
I'm not going to be. I mean, John might be very politically correct and be like, "Well, you know, he's being very defensive. He's, you know, he's a counterfighter." <laughs> I'm going to say, I don't know what this guy's problem is. He's, he's running away from the fight, and I don't mind calling that out. Do you know what I mean? And I think that that's important because um, the the fan, the thing is the thing is if if I don't acknowledge that, the fans aren't going to relate to me. The fans aren't going to connect with me because I'm not calling him what I'm seeing. I'm sugarcoating it and being and making it a UFC product, and I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing as a fight fan. If the guy's avoiding the fight, I'm going to say it, and I think that that is going to help me um, help me be on the same page as the fans because I'm coming from a fan's perspective, and I want to see you guys come and put it on the line. So yeah, I will be quite critical. Has it been easier than you thought it would be? I, mean, I know you've only done you know this text test run on more than one, but. Is it, is it easier than you thought it would be, or is it harder? Because it, it's a long, it's a long day. You, you start it to fight it's like six hours. Yeah, it, it's a marathon. It, it is. I don't. Uh, it, that'd be a better question to ask me on Sunday morning. Um, I'm. I think I would be anxious about it if I didn't have these guys with me. Uh, I mean, like when when we did the uh, the screen testing, as soon as as soon as we sat down and started doing it, I felt immediately relaxed because of how organised and professional John is. I mean, he's literally like, if I fall apart and start rambling, I could just shut up and John will take over and save the day. So th there is a little bit of, of like <laughs> there there is a little bit of, of padding for me. So that takes a bit of the anxiety away. But I still think it's going to be difficult. Yeah, I, I'm 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 taking this very seriously. Yeah, we're doing a dry run tomorrow, mm. so we're going to do yeah. front to back within the, the full cards. So. During the event, cage side? Yeah. So first time with the crowd, first time. It's going to be unbelievable. The atmosphere. I can't exactly. wait to call the fights. It's going to be awesome. crazy. So really, it's kind of difficult to comment, because I, I think once, the, once we're in that environment and it's, it's as electric as it is, and well, my heart's racing right it's now. Raining, about it's it. raining it in. It's just trying to hold it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Put, out the, put them in the body bags <laughs> and sweep the legs. You know, all <laughs> yeah. the, the ambiance of the great Las Vegas. John, how do you feel about making the jump? I mean, Cage Warriors has done some pretty amazing things over there. And how does yeah. it feel to be not only recognized for that you know, by the UFC, but, but making the jump up now? Oh, it's... Uh, I was in it to represent the sport when I first started out and it was just working away at that because I saw it was like echoing what Dan was saying so a lot of times it's poorly represented you know so it's just a recognition that I was obviously doing the right thing so it's massive for me it's a massive tick in the box it's a dream come true it wasn't something that I always set out to do it just seemed so far away but I think with the expansion it's just great timing um, in terms of the jump up yeah I learned I learned yes there's a lot more structure though it's not whereas before I've kind of been wound up and you want some there you go just go do your thing now it's we very much want you to do that but we're going to help you and we're going to get it in this format because we need to do these things and actually i just feel a lot more supported you know so i think we'll see we'll see tomorrow because i'm, I'm going to be working to that format but I, yeah it's we've got to level up right and we all want challenges in our career so that we can become better at what we do and, and that's my goal what was your re immediate reaction when you when you heard you got the job? It was ridiculous. So I have um, <laughs> I have a like a day job, obviously, and uh, I was on a service call. So I, I run a family business with my dad, an electrical services business. I was on a service call doing a survey of some uh, water damage, and uh, Amanda, who's with us here, she 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 called in and I had the client sitting there, and I'm on the phone, and she says, "Right, I've, I've got some news for you." I'm looking around at these clients that are sat there, just looking. At them. They don't want to spend money. Yeah, and then she said, "You got the gig." I was like, "You're kidding! <laughs> this is the best call I've ever had." And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Patel, who I was visiting, were just looking at me, going, "You're nuts!" <laughs> I was literally pacing in their in their conservatory. I'm not sure if you've yeah, exactly that. <laughs> just kind of, and uh, they're just waiting for me to have a conversation about some stuff. I'm like, you can, honestly, you can wait. <laughs> this is really important. You don't know what's going on on this phone. So, uh, so yeah. And then after that, I literally had to switch back into work mode, which I just couldn't do. I was talking to this person with the biggest smile on my face about a, like a, a water leak. So it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, it was quite something. So, so Dan, since you've apparently studied for this this fight for tomorrow night, you have to be prepared. So, um, tell us what you're thinking for the, the main event. I mean, what, what's what, what's going to be the difference in the fight? What, what should we be looking for? Uh, is, the, is the wrestling versus the judo? Is Sam McMahon going to be able to keep us? Maybe so. Why do you keep us standing? What's your thoughts? 
Yeah, I, I, I'll, the first thing I'll say is this is this is going to be Ronda's toughest test. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this the woman she's she's fighting is an athlete, and she's a strong, powerful athlete. She's she's dominant. She's, she can take somebody down and hold them there and beat them up. Now, the problem is if that's her game plan, my feeling is that that's going to play into Ronda's because it would be very easy for Ronda to replicate Sarah McMahon in the gym with with another wrestler, even if she uses a, a guy. They, you know, all the techniques are very similar. But for Sarah McMahon to try and find someone that's going to replicate Ronda's style in the gym would be very difficult. And f f from my my instinct tells me that as soon as uh, Sarah's going to try and get her hands on her, that's when she's going to get launched. Now, the the telling factor will be when it hits the floor. Now, can can Ronda stay on top? Can she score an armbar from the bottom, or is Sarah McMahon just going to keep her hips square and dominate her? I don't really know. I think Ronda might try and keep it standing, to be honest, and work more striking and. From what I've seen on her Instagram, her striking's gotten pretty lethal. So I'm, I'm still picking Ronda. I think she's going to win, but I think it's probably going to be a bad decision.